inside this unassuming building at Dale, Indiana is a truly magical place. A place filled with the sights and sounds of happy times where a glorious yesteryear is still alive and well. Dr. Ted's Musical Marvels, an eclectic collection of musical instruments and memorabilia that will delight and astound you. I guarantee it's like nothing you've ever experienced. And when the sign is lit up, it's showtime. Let's step inside these doors for a musical voyage. Inside the main room is where light and sound create a magical portal to another time. A place where childhood dreams and fascination are around every corner. From carnival mirrors that make you look silly, to carousel horses with top hats, or banners from a carnival long ago. You're surrounded by toys that every child wanted, shiny and new. Stacked to the top of the building in beautiful stage lighting as if every day was that special Christmas morning you so looked forward to. But the main attraction by far are large machines that recreate the music of a bygone era. This amazing collection comes from across the United States and Europe. All pulled together by engineer, medical doctor, and collector, Dr. Ted. Hello, my name is Ted Waffler, and I'm the uh, owner or proprietor of Dr. Ted's Musical Marvels, uh, which we're at right now. This is a collection of mechanical, playing, musical instruments. In other words, everything in here plays by itself one way or the other. Either with an electric motor or you wind it up or you hand crank it. Uh, they play with paper rolls, uh, what we call music books. Uh, I even have some old records here that, that uh, play on a machine that plays mechanically rather than electronically.
collection started uh, about 1973 uh, when I purchased a pump organ just because I thought it'd be fun to restore. And, and that's really what got me started. Uh, and purchasing, purchasing that pump organ, um, working on it, I found other collectors who collected pump organs and other things, including these types of instruments. And, the bug got in me, and so there you go. I try to put together a collection that would be representative of what the instruments are, were doing back at that time, at the time they were, like whether it was in the 20s or the 30s or the late 1800s, what mechanical music was doing at the time. All right, I try to give you a little nutshell of this thing. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll show you around. Okay, this next instrument is called an Arbor. It was built uh, by a man named Arthur Bursons, and you can see the name Arbor was taken from his name. Uh, it was built in Belgium. This organ was made to play in dance halls or uh, maybe small cafes to entertain patrons. Uh, it plays with a paper roll, which I only have one sitting out here, you probably can't see in here because it's too dark, but it's a paper roll about that long, and each paper roll has holes in it, like player piano roll, uh, and each roll plays four tunes. It mainly consists of pipes, which are behind, um, also a bass drum, snare drum, accordion, cymbals, wood blocks, it has a, uh, kind of a unique sound, what we call a dance organ sound. Dance organs were common in Belgium. We've got this one, I've got one back there, which you'll see later. Uh, it's larger. But they have a kind of a unique sound, which maybe by now, if you listen to all the other instruments, you notice each one actually has a different sound of its own. And which is what I like about them. They're not all just the same old thing. Anyhow, I'll go ahead and play a tune. It has a motor in it, so all I have to do is push a button. The electric motor will pump the pump and, and turn the uh, row, the paper row.
Hey, this next instrument is a Wurlitzer. Uh, it's a Model 153, according to Wurlitzer Records. Um, the Wurlitzer Company built about 164 of instruments of this style. They built bigger ones, smaller ones, but this particular style was probably the most popular. It was found on merry-go-rounds and skating rinks. I personally uh, have a fondness for this instrument because I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville had a merry-go-round argument. They had an amusement park with a merry-go-round and it had an organ on it, which was one of these 153s built by Wurlitzer. Not this particular one, but same model. I love that instrument. So it's my favorite in this collection. It has, I mean, some people call it happy music, sad music. A lot of us call it a sad sound because uh, it sounds of a bygone day. Uh, this next instrument is uh, called a Dutch street organ. It was made over in the Netherlands. Uh, these organs are pretty common. Uh, if you go especially to Rotterdam or Amsterdam, uh, in a downtown area, you're almost sure on a nice day to see these in the streets. Uh, they're pushed through by vendors who uh, set them up on a corner and uh, collect money. I mean, they play tunes and hopes for donations, which the little uh, boy on the end there indicates he's holding one of the collection tins in his hand. It plays with what we call book music. This is cardboard. It's folded like, sort of like an accordion fold. A bunch of little holes in it. I'll put this in the instrument on the end, pull it through the key frame, which is what, which, uh, where it has little keys that it punches to play the music. This is hand crank. There's a flywheel on the back and I'll be cranking it. It'll work the bellows and run the music through. <laughs>
this next organ was built by the Stinson Organ Company. Uh, Don Stinson is a man who lives up in Bell Fountain, Ohio, and for years he worked on merry-go-round organs back when he was a younger man. There were lots of merry-go-rounds up in Pennsylvania and Ohio, all in that area, and he probably serviced most of them. Uh, through the years, he, of course, gained a lot of skill working on those instruments, and he decided back in the, oh, around the early 1980s to farm his own organ company and start building organs, which he did. And up until just recent years, which he's retired now. But um, I met him back in the early 80s, and we discussed building an organ for me, one that would have all the bells and whistles and things that I'd want. And uh, so we agreed to it. I gave him a down payment, and uh, I guess a good 20 years later, he finally delivered that organ. Uh, I mean, it wasn't his fault. Um, we, I, I kept wanting changes. He would come up with a new set of pipes for somebody's organ. He was always working on changes and updates and making the organs better and better. And I was always telling him to hold off and finish the next guy's organ and, and, and hold mine off so I could have the newer changes. So eventually, though, we got it done. called a DCAT. That's the name of the company that at least had a hand in building it. Uh, it's a dance organ. Actually, this organ goes back probably into the 1920s. It was built originally by a company called Martier, M-O-R-T-I-E-R. -E and when they built it, it had what was known as an Art Nouveau facade on it. That's uh, curly cues and all kinds of things like that. Well, Martyr was bought out by DCAP, I think around 1930 or somewhere in there. And uh, a lot of these organs, after they were wearing out, they needed to be rebuilt and come in for refurbishing. And when DCAP brought them in, back in then, those days, it was 30s and 40s. And Art Nova was out of style by then, and people were preferring Art Deco. So when DCAP redid this, it's basically the same organ behind this facade. Same pipes and everything, plays the same music, but it's got a different facade on the front, an Art Deco facade. This organ was meant to be taken down and changed venues, oh, maybe every six months or so. So it comes apart fairly easily in spite of the size, everything kind of locks together and you can take it down and a crew could disassemble it, probably have it set up somewhere else in a day's time. This organ plays more keys than any of the organs in my collection. It plays a book like this, it runs through, it's got a bunch of slots in it to play the keys. Each book plays one tune and uh, it has 537 pipes, uh, bass drum, snare drum, two accordions, 
It's got saxophone pipes. The actual saxophones shown here don't play. They just, their keys move, but there's wood saxophone pipes behind them that actually produce the sound. The accordions do produce sound, but so do all the drums, wood blocks, cymbals, and things like that. Anyhow, my assistant will play a tune. Uh, she's behind there right now, so go ahead. Ted's. Uh, we showed you, uh, I think, a pretty good selection of the instruments. Uh, we like to show them off to people. We appreciate people coming around. Uh, our information is found on our website about tours. We do require 15 people at a minimum before we'll have a tour, but we sure do invite people to come. We enjoy showing these instruments. Thank you. Dr. Ted's Musical Marvels, a magical experience you'll never forget.